Welcome back, Scallywags. My name is Ashley, and I am a first-year student here at Skagit Valley College. And today, we are doing tech tip number 26, Wagos on Boats. What's a Wago? <laughs> what is a Wago? Wagos are friction connectors. You can use them to connect multiple wires together instead of crimp clamps or other types of connectors. I got some examples for you here. And wire on boats can last many of years. It's usually not the wire that goes bad. It's our connections. It's how we connect it to something or wires to wires. And so Wagos kind of, they get around that. They make it better. Um, today we are doing a, we're redoing our lab that we did in class. We use different types of tooling and different clamps to connect different wires together just to themselves and we tested tensile strength so we're doing that with Wagos. Uh, so where can you use Wagos? Wagos are not meant to be used in wet areas so these are for dry locations only so some great places you could use them is with lighting, uh, electronics or AC grounding. If you have a junction box and you have that one screw where you have to take three wires and connect it to it, uh, Wagos are a great place for that. You can have three or four, two coming in and then one coming out right to connect to that screw. So it makes it really easier to use and to get in there and it makes it a lot cleaner. What are Wagos rated for? If you look on the side of your Wago, it says right there that you can use it for a 24 to 12 AWG gauge wire. Um, they are 450, up to 450 volts or 32 amps can pass through these safely. And on the back of them, if you look at right there in the middle, you can see that you can actually get a multimeter in there to test for your power. So if you have these installed and you want to make sure that your system, you're having issues or you're not even having issues, you're double checking, that is a really great feature right there where you can actually check what's happening in your Wago. Here at the school, we focus around standards, specifically the American Boat and Yacht Council stand standards, ABYC. They've got some great, they've done a lot of work to put together standards, so all together, no matter what boat you go on, you know what to be looking for and what we should be striving towards. And they have standards for friction connections. What are those three exceptions? Number one, 20 amps or less going through the circuit. Number two, max of 50 millivolt drop. And number three, six pounds for one minute. Let's okay, pull it. let's see what these things can do. Okay, part of this lab, we have our force gauge set up and we make all students go through this and with regular terminations. But today with the way it goes, we're gonna put this 14 gauge wire in here and I'm gonna hold it. Ashley's going to pull, and we're going to see what it'll do. 27 pounds. 27.8, yeah, almost 28. Almost, yeah. It's pretty good. Okay, and then we'll do another one here. Let's swap it out. Working neat. All right, before we test the two that are heat shrunk together, just going to go over some installation tips for you. If you look on the side of your Wago on the other side in the ratings, it has your strip gauge on there. You want right there, it even shows you a visual. And for minimum, when you use these to install, ideally you can do some heat shrink to hold your wires together or minimally you use. Nice little tie wrap for some strain relief. Yep. Something. And they also make these holders for these to pop right into. They work for doubles of these five, or you can do a combination thereof of some twos and fives in these. They pop right in really easy, and they have some screw holes on there for you to easily attach them. Okay, let's pull that double. Yeah. Let's see what happens here. Zero out the force gauge. All right. Double with heat shrink. Double with heat shrink. Yeah, 26. Oh, 26. Not bad. Okay, the next test we did before we started um, to film, we wanted to make sure that these were going to pass tests. So we did a little um, a heat test on these with thermal imaging cameras. 
And so here's some of that footage, but ultimately we could put 20 amps continuously through these for well over half an hour and we got a slight 10 degree temperature rise. So in my opinion, that's spectacular. You would get that with a normal butt splice or whatever. Okay, so they passed the heat test. We skipped over that pretty quickly. Ashley was gonna do a 30 minute test. We forgot about it and did an hour and 22 minutes. Um, it worked great. We keep tech tips short and sweet. So uh, another tech tip coming, we'll be using the thermal image cameras uh, to do all sorts of troubleshooting on your electrical equipment. They meet all the exceptions, the standards. What do you think? You use them on your own boat? Oh, absolutely. There is a link below if you'd like where you can purchase some of these and thanks for watching.